happy Thanksgiving. There are a couple of things that I'm thankful for. I'm thankful for Simon and Baby, my cats, who are older now than I ever thought they'd live to be. I'm thankful that they love to kiss me and give me cuddles and keep me warm in the middle of the night when it's cold outside. I'm thankful for my friends and my family who give me words of comfort when I need it, and vice when I could use it, and somebody to enjoy all of the great things in life that happen to all of us. I'm also thankful for my education, not only the opportunities I've had in the past, but those that I'll have in the future. But most of all, I think I'm thankful for my rights. All of them. The ones guaranteed by the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. The right to sit here in my living room and say what I think without having to worry about the government or the police busting down my door. It's a right that not everybody shares. Women and men in other countries do have to live in fear of abusive spouses and abusive governments. Heck, there are men and women in this country who have to live in fear of abusive spouses who don't have the ability to say what's on their mind. And until everybody shares the comfort of that right, I will continue to support educational programs and organizations to try and make sure everyone has the same protection. And I'm thankful that I'm one of the lucky ones. And it is because I am thankful for the right to speak my mind that I thought I'd share a couple of lessons that I've learned with y'all today. Lessons that I'm thankful for. First of all, don't ever take life too seriously. Because every time you start to, something will happen that will make you realize it's not all that serious. And life is way easier to deal with if you recognize that it's all a little silly, it's all a little crazy, it's all a little random, and there's nothing you can do about it. Secondly, we need to be nice to those in the service industry who work for fairly low pay and barely any gratitude, but who all do jobs that we couldn't live without. When was the last time anybody thanked their garbage man? Or saw their garbage man? Maybe people who live in houses do, but I don't even know when the truck comes to empty the dumpsters at my apartment complex. And I've never had the opportunity to say thank you, though I really appreciate the job that they do. Making sure that the garbage gets emptied on a regular basis makes where I live a nicer place. But I think that this is this concept of being nice to those who serve us is best put into a little story. If, for example, you are going to order food for delivery because you just don't feel like cooking or have a craving, and you're told that they stopped delivering about 10 minutes ago, but you know they're willing to make an exception and they'll deliver for you anyway. And they make a point of telling you that they had stopped delivery already and are going to make an exception for you. It'd be really nice if you give the driver an extra special bonus tip. Extra dollar or two just for going out of their way to deliver when they didn't have to. But I think it's more than just nice uh, to actually tip it all, giving them the next whole dollar amount, i.e. if the bill is nine seventy, and you hand them $10 and then say, oh no, by the way, you, you don't have to give me change. Really? Because I think in that situation it would be perfectly understandable if the delivery driver took 30 cents out of their pocket and said, no, here, you take it. Because I think that it's pretty clear you could use it more than I could. And it's important to say this with a straight face, no laughing or smirking, and to be genuine about it. To honestly believe that the person trying to tip you 30 cents needs that money more than you do. Recognizing that you are more fortunate and they could use it. While that might seem a little mean, I disagree. I think it would be perfectly justified. I've never done it. I don't know anyone who's ever done it. But think about the theory. Essentially, the person is telling you that your time and gas and gar you know, car wear and tear is meaningless to them. They don't care that you went out of their way. In fact, they expect it. 
And you know what? I think, at least for me, I would much rather say, no, you know what? You keep that 30 cents than sit there and take it and be insulted. And really, why waste your time getting insulted anyway? Like we covered a little bit ago, don't take life too seriously. Joke about it. Laugh about it. Take that 30 cents and give it to a homeless guy. Because that homeless guy could probably use the money even more than the person who stiffed you anyway. So, if you're going to, if you are that delivery driver, don't take it too seriously. And don't lose your temper and be all like, Oh my god, how could you do this to me? What the hell is wrong with you? Because then you come off as the crazy person. And you'd probably get fired. And isn't being employed but being stiffed on a tip better than being unemployed? And the final lesson I'd like to share with you today is don't make unnecessary drama. Seriously, we've all done it. I've done it. I can't think of a single person I know who hasn't at some time or another. But I think one of the easiest and best ways to avoid unnecessary drama is to remember, if I disagree with you or have a difference of opinion, that doesn't automatically mean that I'm wrong. It doesn't automatically mean that what I think or feel is worthless or childish or insert other random negative adjective here. If I love the color pink and you love the color green and we both think each other's opinion is crazy we don't understand how each other could think the way that we do or feel the way that we do about the colors that we like that doesn't mean either of us is wrong I'm not gonna go and say how dare you like the color green what's wrong with you have you never read a book that'd be crazy but for some reason we as a society tend to do this when it's about things more passion filled than just color. Think about the last time you heard discussion, discourse, or debate about more volatile topics like immigration, national security, politics in general, abortion, the body scanners. It becomes really easy to slip into those logical flaws of well, because we don't agree and I don't understand you, you must be wrong. When it's about something, a topic, that we are really passionate about. When it's something that we believe in but aren't necessarily ready to go out and start yelling and screaming on a street corner to spread our idea, that we're able to be more understanding of a difference of opinion. You know, and the funny thing is that oftentimes it ends up being the equivalent of Person A thinks 2 plus 2 equals 3. Person B thinks 2 plus 2 equals 5. And they get really mad at each other, fighting all to the death style, saying, You're so childish for believing it's 3. Have you never read a book? Why can't you just grow up and accept that the answer is 5? 5? Are you kidding me? You need to take your head out of random orifice and realize that the correct answer is 3. But we, as an observer, can recognize that both parties are wrong. The answer is neither three nor five, and in fact they are both equally incorrect, being one digit away from the right answer. But when it comes to things that aren't so cut and dried, any of the topics I've mentioned earlier, it becomes way easier to start attacking the other person and translate a difference in opinion to a representation of that person's worth. Just because we don't understand why someone thinks that the answer is 5 doesn't mean our answer of 3 isn't right. It just means we don't understand. M one of the things I used to say to my mom, joking in algebra class, is that I could do math too. That I just saw the world in a slightly different way. My mom asked what I meant, and as a joke, I said that I understood that the answer wanted when what is 2 plus 2? The answer that people want, the teachers want, is 4. But what if, when you see 2 plus 2, you see 22? Technically, it is not necessarily algebraically correct, but there's still logic behind how somebody got to the answer. It might be a different way of thinking that might not be right in a math class, but that doesn't mean that the way they got there was illogical or wrong just as different. 
to try and realize the next time that you have a disagreement or a fight with somebody that just because they think the answer is three and you think the answer is five doesn't mean you're right and they're wrong. Heck, it doesn't mean they're right and you're wrong. You could both be wrong. Or, as I like to think, in the case of 2 plus 2 equals 4 and 2 plus 2 equals 22, you could both be right, but just have correct answers to two different questions. So try not to let differences of opinion and a lack of understanding as to how people got to their opinions or feelings cause a drama in your life because it's unnecessary. If we sat down and said, well, I think it's three and you think it's five, how'd you get there? Because I, I don't see it and maybe I'm wrong. I, I would honestly like to know. I might have made some simple mistake. And then you can figure out not only why the other person believes the answer they do, but maybe realize that your answer is wrong. Or a better way of explaining why theirs is wrong. So, be kind to one another this holiday season. Don't stiff your service people. And try and insert a little more logic and reasoning into your thinking and interactions with other people. Recognize that even though y'all might be discussing a really volatile topic, the conversation doesn't necessarily have to degrade into name-calling and drama. Because name-calling and drama doesn't make the situation any better. In fact, it just makes everybody all the more heated, all the more angry, and all the more likely to continue or start fighting. And I think that's what I'd wish for Christmas. Not only this Christmas, but all Christmases. The people treated each other a little nicer and worked just a little harder at understanding what and why people felt differently than they do. Because I think then, the world would be a much better place. And I think that most people, at one point or another in their daily lives, do attempt to find out why people think other things. But speaking from personal experience, it's really easy to let emotion overcome that logic center of the brain to say oh yeah well you suck that is not a proper response that doesn't actually address any of the things that had been said it's off topic and the only way to really solve the world's problems be they immigration the economy wars against isms is not by name calling and is not by going off topic so that's my wish, that we all be nicer to each other, be more considerate and understanding that sometimes people who work really crappy jobs for really low pay deserve at the very least a smile from us during what is understandably a stressful time of year. Because they're probably stressed out too, and your smile might make their day.